Mic test, mic test. <coughs> Lie there, one note, don't die. Okay, I think we are live. Well, hello. Just give us a few seconds to set up. Oh, and if there's a lag halfway, I apologize. Life is hard these days. Anyway, today's uh, AMA session, we will focus on paper four because uh, from the comments, it seems to be quite a number of people doing paper four recently, okay? And uh, there are certain topics that we cannot record in time for your paper four, obviously, which means now we will take questions, whether it's from uh, OPM chapter or communications or whichever chapters that is not covered, lah, all right? So I think I will start with whoever that is that's just commented. So Anupa, welcome. Thanks for watching our videos. I'm gonna start with O and ten. So just tell me the year and Varian. Now just solve the questions and talk you through it. So the live stream will be about an hour and a half. So we'll stop around ten o'clock Malaysian time. Okay? Because I'm from Malaysia and so is Miss Ellie. And after that if you got any questions, if we have time, we might repeat it again. Lah. We'll see how. Let's see if people join in and if there's some feedback. So this is recorded. <coughs> Excuse me. And if, let's say, you feel that... Oh. Okay, and if, let's say, you feel that you want to rewatch again, the recording of this stream will be available. Okay, so we're going to look at Winter 10. Paper 4-2. Okay. I always tell students, pray for my computer. Alright, question 8. Paper 4 to question 8. Uh, this is such an old paper. But sure. Okay, this seems like a question from nuclear physics. I'm going to crop the question in. By the way, paper.sc is a fantastic website. So I'm plugging them, if you don't know. Free and hyperlink resources for past year paper that you can search. So it's pretty great. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in and listening to us and messaging us. Lah. <laughs> At least we don't feel like we're talking to the void. <clears throat> so let's just... Pandemic is hard, so let's just help everyone. Help yourself, help your friends. All right, so nuclear fission, right? Um, when it comes to... Again, pray for my laptop, okay? Okay, so, number one, when it comes to nuclear energy, the nucleus itself carries a lot of energy, okay? Because it took a lot of energy to squeeze all the particles, all the protons and the neutrons together in such a small place, right? So the nuclear reaction got two types. That is the fusion. So fusion here is uh, two nucleus. And these nucleus are small nucleus combining 
to form a larger, more stable nucleus. So the quest of all nucleus is stability. Isn't that why you are studying your A-level? You hope that in your future, your life will be somewhat more stable. Okay, so the other one will be fission. All right, so fission here will be uh, splitting. So fusion that like you see, the word fuse. Okay, so if you are like a more language oriented person, fuse means to come together. Okay, this is fissure. Fissure is to split apart. Okay, so this is one large nucleus. Uh, splitting into two lighter nucleuses, no la, nuclei, the plural of nucleus. Nuclei, okay, of approximately the same mass. So it legit just split into half. So approximately the same mass. And uh, they are more stable. Okay. Which are more stable? So that is the idea of nuclear fission. Okay, la. just bring this one and put here. So the two marks here is you start off with one large heavy nucleus. nucleus. I'm going to crop the mark scheme and put it here for you to see. So there's a few terms that you probably need to think about. Okay, cropping may not be the best idea, seeing that there is a lag. You okay, one note? You okay? Okay, I shall not get too excited. Alright. Anyway, let me know if the music is too loud. Uh, since the paper 4 for FM, I heard from someone in the comments it will happen on the 24th. Right, right. So 24th is next Wednesday. So normally, Miss Ellie and I, we are like recording like crazy person here. Lah. So there will be no time for AMA. Uh, next week okay so the first half of the week i mean that's how i work i tend to record a lot in the beginning and then tuesday friday is when i begin to receive questions or start to address questions from my students and also just if i can make it lah. all right thanks for letting me know if the music is too loud yeah so just something to fill in the sound so let's look at the keywords all right so we are splitting so it's only a one-off ama i will do another one for the may june series so, but if you have any questions, you can just pop in. May or may not uh, record. And we will record enough questions so that you can figure out the rest on your own. At least that's the intention. So, this splitting of heavy nuclei is M1 mark. So, the term of splitting is, it has to be nucleus. You cannot use atom, cannot use nuclide. Okay, so always think about nuclear reaction only for the nucleus. Okay, two lighter nuclei of approximately the same mass that are more stable. Nuclei here is the plural of nucleus. Okay, Miss Ellie always said I don't zoom in enough. Nah. Okay, so I'm sorry, Fatima. Uh, just run through. Lah. Let me know if you just pick and, and certain questions where you generally struggle with and just let us know. All right, so the nuclear fission reaction produces neutrons. So, in a power station, neutron may be absorbed by rods made of boron-10. Okay, so complete the nuclear reaction for the absorption of a single neutron by boron-10 with the emission of alpha particle. So, because this is a very old past year question, this is actually now relocated into your AS. Okay, so it's no, no longer really asked in your A2. They got other things to ask you, like, don't worry. Alright, so, uh, but just for completion's sake, I will talk about this. So, this nuclear reaction produces neutron. Okay, the neutrons are absorbed by boron. So, this one is your boron 10. Because you can see, this is 10, this is 10. One. Okay, so that one is boron 10. And this boron 10 is going to absorb the neutron. So, we absorb the neutron plus neutron so i'm sorry if you're not taking chemistry but we've got to balance the chemical equation so it's very helpful it says that um there is an emission of alpha particle so maybe recall your as a bit 
Alpha particle is helium-4-2. You can also write this alpha-4-2. So this one can be alpha-4-2. So the proton number must be balanced. 5 plus 0 is 3 plus 2. So all these numbers here, 5 plus 0 is 3 plus 2. Balance, no? Okay, and the mass number or the nucleon number have to be balanced. So 10 plus 1 is 11, and 7 plus 4 is also 11. So this one would be 7. One blank space, one mark. Okay, so next part. So just why, when the neutrons are absorbed by the boron rods, the rod become hot as a result of this nuclear reaction. So if you're interested, you can go and watch the HBO the HBO show, short mini-series where they talk about Chernobyl. Chernobyl. This one is in Russia, guys. Am I spelling it right? Yeah, something like that. So uh, they have a nuclear reactor explosion because something happened, something wrong happened with their boron rods. So this rod is actually the controlling rod. This nucleus, this sorry, this neutron is like a bullet that is doing chain reaction and making a lot of nucleus decay at the same time. If too many nucleus decay together, then that is very dangerous. So we want to avoid that from happening. But if we absorb this neutron, this neutron, this neutron have high, they are fast moving. Okay? This neutron here is fast moving. They behave like tiny bullets. Okay? So normally the nuclear scientists will explain that way. Nuclear reaction is like tiny, billions of tiny bullets in the air. So you can say that the uh, emitted neutron has large kinetic energy. And this kinetic energy has to go somewhere. Okay, so you can say that the neutrons are stopped because it is being absorbed, are stopped inside the boron rods. So, Ke is lost and converts to conservation of energy. It needs to become something. Converts to heat or thermal energy. Raising the temperature of boron. Alright. Okay, if I just say splitting, not good enough because what are you splitting? Your heart into two? <laughs> your brain, splitting heavy nucleus. All right. Uh, yes, your 11, is it 11? 7 plus 4, no. 7 plus 4 is 10 plus 1. Okay. Is there a Chernobyl law? No, there's no Chernobyl law. Chernobyl is a place in Russia. Okay, I'm just going to write here. If, if you're interested, there are f quite a few documentaries you can find. Uh, Plane in Russia, place in Russia, where a nuclear reactor exploded, killing many people. It's not a law, it's a place. Alright, so go find out what happened in Chernobyl. Very interesting. Okay, continue. What are my questions? Yeah, yeah, you're right, Ali. It's just... It's actually quite interesting like if you watch the HBO uh, documentary, short mini-series about it, and you think about the lives of people and how uh, the scientists didn't take the readings seriously. Like they saw, oh, the reading is maximum is 3.6. So when the, when the meter read 3.6, the, the dosimeter or the nuclear reactor detector, it reads 3.6, they thought, oh, it's only 3.6, but the reading has already maxed out. So it's more than 3.6, it is not exactly 3.6. So they all operated as normal and thought things were fine until people began to die. Lah. And it only took a few hours for people to begin to show signs of nuclear poisoning. Right? Okay. So now I'm going to move on to the next question. I will do an AMA for the general papers. Lah. I just forgotten that there are February March papers because Malaysians don't do February and March. Mm. Okay, so summer thirteen paper for three. I will later answer two more questions from someone who sent me an email. 
I'm not sure if he's here. Holler at me if you're here. You emailed me the questions. Yeah, there's a recent show. So you can treat this as like either a treat for you if you have done enough past years or a treat for yourself when you are done with this. Pretty sure you can find it if you are a bit creative in finding your media or your shows to watch. So it talks a lot. Of, you can actually see the scientists and how they responded. And then you need to think, are these good scientific practices and things we want to happen? All right. So I'm, I believe this is your question. Summer 13, paper 4, 3, question 2. So state, is, state what is meant by ideal gas. I think this one, I can leave it to you. Just a note here that this three mark means it needs a lot of detail. Okay. So the first detail is any gas that obeys the law or the, the relationship. That's better. Relationship of PV over T is equal to constant for a constant amount or if you don't want to use amount you can use mass of gas all right so in this case uh, what we are saying is you have to write out the conditions so the mass is fixed or constant constant mass here so this one gas that obeys the relationship pv over t is constant is one mark there is a constant amount or mass of gas or fixed number of moles is another mark. And where's the third mark? Always ask yourself, where are the marks before just leaving the question behind? You probably need to explain the symbols P, V, and T. So you say, oh, P is pressure, V is volume. And normally, I'm a bit paranoid when I will write unit in meter cube. And temperature here is thermodynamic temperature. Because I don't want them to take away marks for these kind of uh, technical things, you see. Thermodynamic temperature in Kelvin. Alright, done. Next. So here there's a cylinder A and B. And the gas will flow like this. I think. I'm not sure. Where do you think the gas will flow? Let us read. Initially, the tap, P, tap T is closed. Okay, fine. Cylinders contain the ideal gas of different temperature. Oh, hang on a second. If you look at the temperature, the pressure, I mean, this pressure is higher. The pressure for B is higher. Okay. Cylinder A has a constant volume and contains gas at a pressure of this much and temperature this much. Show that cylinder A contains 0 0.34 mole of gas. So this one is a pretty straightforward question. Whenever they give you a lot of information, pressure, volume, temperature, definitely we can use the ideal gas equation PV is equal to NRT. Right, so just substitute 3.4, making sure everyone is SI. So this 2.5 times 10 to the power of 3, cm cubed should be in SI. So centi is 10 to the negative 2, but centi power 3 will be 10 to the negative 6. So if you need a little bit of help, you can write it this way. We are looking for the number of moles N. R is 8.31 and the temperature is 300 Kelvin. So from here, you need to show the substitution. Okay, so I think this part is okay. I'm going to quickly fly, fly by this. Let me know if there's any mistake. I will... Yeah, we will save the life, don't worry. Okay, so cylinder B has a constant volume this much. So now we're talking about B. V and P. No thermal energy enter or leaves the gas. Okay, so when tap T is open, the pressure of the gas is now the same. You are asked to find the final temperature of the gas. Miss, can we use PV is NRT again? But right now, we just put all of this gas together. Well, let's see. Let me crop the cylinder and transfer over so we can substitute without pain. But let's give it a slight think for a bit. Do you think that the when I open the tab, that once the gas... Okay, where would the gas flow? Do you think the gas will flow from high pressure to low pressure or low pressure to high pressure? Where do you think the, the gas will flow? 
From your experience. From your experience, where do you think, you think like the gas will go from high to low? You see, uh, high pressure means the gas particle is moving faster. You have cylinder B where the gas pressure is higher, so the particles will ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, move very fast. Whereas here it's very sluggish and it moves slower. Yeah. The pressure will move from high. So you need to, if you need, if you need to, I will not turn on the GIF. But if you go to our thermodynamic chapter questions, uh, there's, there's a link to a website where you can play with the simulation. Okay, so high to low, right? You're right. If you're thinking high to low, then you're correct. Because all these gas particles are just more energetic. They have a larger pressure. Ma. So there's more collision. Higher pressure here means more collision with wall. So if there's more collision with wall, when you open the tap, the gas will flow from here to here. So right here, gas flows from B to A until the pressure of B is equal to pressure of A. And hey, guys, do we have this pressure? Did they give us the pressure? The, the pressure of gas in both cylinders is 9.3. 9.3. What is wrong with my brain? 3.9 times 10 to the power of 5 Pascal. So I guess we can use PV go to NRT, but we use it for combine A and B. Put together. So what is the pressure? Uh? We know the final pressure, right? Okay, so we're going to put in the final pressure. 3.9 times 10 to the power of 5. Volume will be the total volume. So we have 2.5 times 10 to the power of 3 plus 1.6 times 10 to the power of 3, I'm going to be smart and take out the prefix. Okay, so it's essentially what I'm doing is I'm summing up these numbers. Okay, don't forget to also convert to meter cube. So this is negative 6 for conversion. Okay, do we know the total number of moles? Before we open the tab, cylinder B has 0 0.2 mole. And cylinder A, we have calculated in the first part, 0 0.34 mole. So I'll just put 0 0.2 plus 0 0.34 because combination what? Okay, I ran out of space. I'm going to continue here. This will be 8.31 T. So from here, we can find our temperature. Yeah, so they will diffuse. Concentration, Okay, we will avoid that. Partial pressure, concentration, equilibrium is all physical chemistry. I don't know which channel you should go to. <laughs> okay, so we'll just say that we open the tap, the gas particle will equilibrium. There will be equilibrium. The pressure will be the same. So you can find the temperature. All right, I think this one is 360. Okay, moving on. By reference to work done and change in internal energy, so whenever I see work done and I see change in internal energy, immediately the idea that should be going on in my mind is this one will be first law of thermodynamics where uh, delta U is equal to Q plus W. First law of thermodynamics. So Suggest why the temperature of gas in cylinder A has changed. In fact, the temperature of gas have rised. Okay. Although there is no thermal energy entering or leaving, which may seem very deceptive. Oh, no heat. No heat. Ma. So surely there is no change in temperature. You'll be wrong. The change in temperature is due to internal energy. So for gases, right? This change in this one, this delta U, is proportional to temperature. Go watch the video to find out why. But this is internal energy of the gas. For ideal gas, there's a, this is a pro popular question they like to ask. Why is ideal gas internal energy only dependent on temperature? Go watch some videos. <laughs> okay. So from here, if you want to suggest why the temperature of the gas has changed, you need to start with what happens when the tap opens which I've already started you thinking about it just now. So when tap opens, 
gas will flow from the higher pressure cylinder A, so cylinder B to cylinder A. Okay, so when the gas is flowing into A, from the perspective of A, it is receiving more particle. It's like something is pushing into A. Imagine you are a gas particle, you are chilling in cylinder A, minding your own business, suddenly for no reason the tap open and so many gas begin to infiltrate your space. So because of this, we can say that there is a work done, okay, on, on the gas in cylinder A. Okay, so however, there is no, I mean, you could mention the thermal energy, but it's not really that important. Okay, so I guess instead of however, you could say, hence, from delta U is equal to Q plus W, although... Q is zero because there's no thermal energy transfer. W for work done on the gas is positive. So because of this, the change in internal energy is positive. Right? Because this one is zero. This is positive number. So this delta U must be positive. Zero plus a positive number is a positive number. So if delta U is positive, change in internal energy. Delta here is change. If change in internal energy is positive, this means that the temperature of the gas rises. That is your conclusion. So where are your marks? Starting from the beginning, you understand that gas is flowing from A, from sorry, from B to A. Gas flows from B to A is one mark. Okay, second mark, you say work done on. Must mention the word on. Don't just work done gas. Then because work done on the gas means you add energy to the gas. Energy added you do work on something it's just from that english so if english is not your first language then it's a bit hard for you to brain this part but when we say work done on i do something on that person energy is added okay as compared to i write here for you work done by gas so if the gas is the one that does the work energy is removed from gas. So this one is negative. Okay, so the final mark is your conclusion. No? Internal energy is, po I mean, internal energy positive or internal energy increases. Temperature increases. This one is your final mark. Okay. Yeah, so those of you who have mentioned can yeah, so I think some, I'm not sure if everyone is doing the fat mush paper, but this is mainly for the fat mush paper. Alright, so where did I last start off? So I did the May, June 13 paper for 3. Anyway, if I look downwards, it's because my monitor is here. Ah, yes, I like high to low in caps. So I think the next question is capacitor. Don't die, it's okay. It's just a bunch of parallel plates. You got this. ON17. Okay, I think I will... After this capacitor question, I'm going to jump to some requested question. Maybe the person couldn't join because of the timing problem. So, winter 17, paper 4, 1, question 6. But yeah, you can talk to each other in the chat. I do not mind. Hmm. Winter 14, 14 17. Question six. What is it? Oh, this one. My friends, my friend, there is a video regarding this. Are you dying in the whole question or are you just dying in the last part? 
which part are you dying? Do you know how to find our videos or not? I'm pretty sure we recorded this one. Dun, dun, dun. Maybe someone can help our friend in the chat while I paste the question. I can, I can roughly go through it, but the full explanation, this one, kind of already recorded. So sometimes I may not cover if it's already recorded because it's still either me or Miss Ellie and physics is still the same. Oh. UK right or part C yeah. part C is there a part C for this question where is part C I see A I see B no more already <laughs> it's part C do you have a different paper <laughs> is it this one works lab I don't know part B is it B I'm like, where is C? Do you see something here that I don't see? You see what I did there? Okay, anyway. Is it part B, my friend? Okay, beautiful. Alright, so... Before we talk too much... The first issue of panic when it comes to this kind of question is means I don't know what is the value of C. Uh, you have to trust yourself. If they don't give you, you don't need to know. Okay, so this one is 9 volt. And then here you have a capacitor C. And in fact, can I combine these two capacitors? Because they are parallel anyway. So I'm just going to combine them together and put like that, okay? So this is the capacitor PT. Right? So if they are parallel, the combined capacitance is 2C. Okay? And because these two things are series, the charge stored in capacitor 1, this Q, and this Q is the same charge. So I'm going to use the ratio very soon. Q is equal to CV1, right? So Q is constant, meaning C is inversely proportional to potential. So you have probably already calculated the potential. If I have a smaller capacitance, I will need a larger potential. So this is 6 volt. And here to here is 3 volt. This part okay or not? The ratio is inverted. So for capacitor, CQ ratio CPT is 1 to 2. But for the potential difference, the potential difference across Q ratio, the potential difference across PT is uh, 6 to 3 which is 2 to 1. Yeah, can ratio inverse, all right? So I'm going to transfer this potential difference here. Here to here is 6 volt, and here to here is actually 3 volt. So here to here also 3 volt, and everyone is happy, and only if only they didn't change the switch position. <laughs> but they did, right? They put this one at Y. So part B, they ask you, if I put the switch as Y, and then I... This X here is not connected. So sad. Very sad. Big sad. What happened? Hiya. Okay, in this case, right, you look at the capacitor C. Capacitor C got store charge, right? Remember, the whole point here is that we're going to store some charge here. Go store some charge here. You know, like Minecraft, you store your loot. But this one, let's, it will store the same amount of charge. But this one will store double. Conservation of charge. 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. This one will store more. Because when I did this, I combined the two capacitor P and T. So I've already combined them. But actually, the charges were split into two. So right now, you need to visualize what will happen to the charge when I flip the switch. Originally, at X, everyone will be charged. So PT parallel will have the same amount of charge as Q. That's why the potential difference of Q is higher. And everyone is happy and done deal. But when you connect this to Y, what happened is this capacitor T is isolated, so no change. But don't forget, uh, these electrons are very naughty. They always want to 
if they have enough energy, jump across the parallel plate to meet their soulmate, the positive charge. But unfortunately, the gap between the parallel plate is insulated. So this negative charge cannot jump over. Eh, 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 cannot. But when you connect it to switch Y, you have opened the floodgates. This electron be like, yay, I can see my sweetheart. No more MCO, can pass the state lines. No more lockdown. I can come here and neutralize this charge. Neutralize this charge. If the negative charge wants to go to plate T, there needs to be a connection. Can you see there's no connection here? We put the switch at Y, X is gone. Cannot, because this plate of T is negative. The negative charges don't want to meet more negative charges. Why would the negative charge want to go and meet more negative charge? So this one cannot go already. They wouldn't even consider going through here because this is just more negative charges. I want to meet a positive charge, you know? Okay, the lag has commenced. Ah, so then it will come here and neutralize the plate. So eventually, right, when all the charge is neutral, all the charge is neutral, all the charge is neutral, this charge will become zero because this capacitor P will discharge. So this one will drop. Potential difference will go from 3 volt to 0 volt. So if this one drop to 0 volt, the battery will be like, hey, excuse me, hello. We agreed that this entire thing should maintain 9 volt. Look at this P. Drop to 0 then Q is like, okay, law, my partner dropped to zero. I take everything. Lor. So this Q will go from six volt to nine volt because you have to maintain the terminal potential from the top to the bottom as nine volt because you can see this part is connected to the battery. So that's what that's the answer that they want for four marks. Describe the changes in potential difference. For P, the potential difference will change from 3 volt to 0 volt decreases. And for Q, it will increase from 6 to 9. That's the answer. All right. Okay. Let me see from the chat. Anyway, we actually record these questions for you. All right. There's a request for... So this part, I'm not going to talk about it, okay? And yes, the live session is recorded, so don't worry about it. I have some questions to do. I'm going to start from the top with summer 16 or May, June 16. Paper 4 to question 13. You can find a lot of questions using our hashtags and also the playlist. Lah, if you know which, which chapter the question is from. So if, let's say, uh, Miss Ellie and I get busy and not available, you can use similar questions to help you answer the other questions. So once your basic is okay, you can take some time to think things through. You can do it one. You spend so many hours studying, you gotta trust yourself a bit, right? A little bit. Okay, so there's another question regarding nuclear radiation, especially if you're doing the Fat Marsh series. We, def we will definitely not make these videos in time. This is the last chapter. Okay, but this question is actually quite interesting because um, you can see here this is your detector to your counter and then we block the radioactive source with the lead sheet. Okay, and uh, for the stu... Yeah. What, next quest what is your next question? Let me know in the chat. I will answer your question after this law. Okay, the graph is... Okay, hang on. I need to zoom in to crop the graph. Again, please pray for my computer. <laughs> but for some strange reason, live streaming is not as bad as teaching a live class on Zoom on my computer resources. Teams is quite bad. Okay, I draw a big, big graph because I need to draw a straight line after this. 
I wouldn't draw a straight line on this thing because it's not going to look straight and I will be annoyed with myself. But if you have or you can print out the paper, then that will be great for yourself. Okay, it's a very long question for 8 marks. Much pain. It's okay. Welcome to A2. Okay, so I'm going to read the question first. What is meant by gamma radiation? So remember just now we talked about nuclear reaction or nuclear uh, fission. Okay, so you can say that this gamma radiation is uh, electromagnetic radiation, right? You know, AS, you learn from radio wave to gamma wave. So this, or oh, gamma radiation, so this is an electro magnetic radiation in the form of photons you don't want to mention photons also can but it's electromagnetic radiation emitted from an unstable nuclei or nucleus so if the nucleus is not stable they have a choice to alpha gamma beta or any combination to decrease their energy levels. All right, so here there's a source of gamma radiation placed inside a shielding, very important, okay? Because we don't want to get cancer. You know how you can get cancer or not from all this radiation? I feel that very underwhelming that I color the source black. But the reason why you will get cancer when you're exposed to a lot of radiation is because all this is very radioactive. If they go into your body, they will rip out the bonds in your DNA. If I rip out the electron and the bonds in your DNA, then when your cell multiply by mitosis, maybe the multiplication is not, the copies are not perfect. Too much of imperfect mitosis, cancer. All right, anyway, continue. They have a thickness of the lead sheet. So I guess they'll put different, different sheets of different thickness. Okay. All right. The average count rate C corrected for background is recorded. So currently right now, wherever you are sitting in this world, there is some background radiation. Because there's cosmic radiation, there's outer space, okay? So this uh, outer space cosmic radiation can also be detected one. So we will just tell the detector to ignore the background radiation. Like right now, there's a jazz music because it's not very noisy. So you and I, we are just ignoring the music. But when I need to pause a bit to scratch my leg, it won't be very awkwardly silent. La. That's the purpose of the music. Okay. So the variation of thickness X to lawn C. Okay. Here's where all the headache happen, especially if you don't do maths, but you do physics. Okay, so I think uh, on our channel, Miss Ellie recorded a bunch of math booster for you to understand exponentials and lawn and lock. Go and watch them. Okay, so you should be able to manipulate an equation that looks like this. Anyway, the absorption of gamma radiation in lead may be represented by this equation, where C0 is the count rate when x is equal to 0 and mu is the linear attenuation. All right, so this equation, right, especially if you intend to see for your A2, is very, very important because you will see this again and again in radioactivity, ultrasound, x-ray. Because what they're actually saying is, let me draw the diagram so we can brain the scenario together. Remember, you have your lead container. Lead, lead, lead. <laughs> we got the radioactive source here. And then you put the sheet here. Okay, so let's say I have a infinitely long sheet. La. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Very long. Okay, and uh, at this point here, x is equal to 0. And then we measure x starting from this point. Here to here is our x. So if you're going to draw the radiation count, right, it will drop exponentially. The count rate will start from here. This is our C0. Because if you substitute x as 0, this will be e to the power of 0. And e to the power of 0, if you press your calculator, is 1. So this one, C0, is the count rate when x is 0. Alright? So it will decrease. This one. 
which makes sense because the thicker the lead, the smaller the amount of radiation. All right. So from here, you can look at this graph and figure out how on earth can we get a straight line. C is equal to C naught E negative mu x. So we will ln both sides. Ln C will be equal to ln C naught E negative mu x. Okay. Anyway, there's a question in the chat about paper 5. I am not sure what you think you need for paper 5. How do you think a paper 5 AMA will help you? What do you need to know? What do you, like, you are the one that is learning. So beyond the videos that is currently available on the playlist, what do you need to know? What would you like help with? Let me know in the chat. So this is lawn A, B. Okay, so I'm using the identity of lawn A, B bracket is equal to lawn A plus lawn B. So this one will be lawn C naught plus lawn E negative mu x. All right. Second thing, I'm using the identity of shifting. So this power and exponent can be shifted down for ln and log. So another log identity that I will use, I write here for you, is ln, let's say ln b power n. I don't use n. <laughs> let's say ln b power c can be written as c ln b. Again, I'm not teaching maths, so I'm not going to derive the equations for you. Just reminding you of the relationship. This C has nothing to do with this C. Uh. They are different things. Okay. So this one, okay, la, if it makes you happy. I feel I feel that people should, I should change it in case people are confused. A and B are just any arbitrary numbers for you to compare them. That's all. All right. So if you're multiplying two things, they can be split into two. If you have a power here, a power struggle, this power can be brought down. Negative mu x, why did you come out? Okay, negative mu x times ln e. Ln e is 1. Ln e is 1. So our final form of our Pokemon, no la, the final form of our, okay, let me move this one down a bit, of our equation will look like this. I'm teaching slowly, not because of me or you, but because of the computer. So this will be negative mu x times 1 plus ln c naught. Let's compare this with the equation of a straight line y is equal to mx plus c. So you can tell from here that this is the y-axis, ln c. Go and check out the graph. This is the x-axis, okay? Meaning your gradient is negative mu and ln c is your y-intercept. So what, we're going, what you need to do to solve this question is you look at all the plot points here and draw your best fit line. This is ln c against x. Okay, maybe I should try. I don't know. How will it look? Who knows anymore? Okay, I don't I honestly don't know how to best fit line on the computer. Because I don't have a transparent half meter rule to adjust. But you, if you can afford to print out this question and draw your best fit line. I just roughly lah. Huh? Don't be too hard on me. Okay, so it's probably... Nope. Something like... Actually, this part also needs adjusting. Something like this-ish, but not really. Okay, it's good enough. I got two on top. I got two below. I'm happy. May be able to draw a better one, but don't, not sure how to on this because I don't have a line. Okay, so from here, you can find the gradient. Gradient is equal to negative mu. 
So use this to find the value of mu. This is four marks. So one mark is actually the manipulation of the equation. So if you're wondering where this four mark is, uh, I'm just going to show you the mark scheme to save us some time. Okay, so normally when they ask you a graphical analysis for paper four, right, the, uh, the mark scheme will look something like this. Okay, you draw your line of best fit if needed is one mark. And then you know that the mu is the gradient of the best fit line, or you write this equation, or negative gradient, one mark. And then if your gradient is within this range, you get one mark if it's 0 0.061 plus minus 0 0.04. So you get one mark if your answer is 0 0.057 to 0 0.065. You'll get two mark if your answer is 0 0.059 to 0 0.063. Okay, and the last part, suggest and explain whether the value of this constant will be the same or greater or smaller than aluminium. So the thing about aluminium, right, aluminium is not a very good absorber because they are very reactive. Okay, so some chemistry here for you. If you think about the electrochemical series, aluminium is more reactive than lead. lead. Okay, so I think the first one I write is the aluminium, okay, uh, is less absorbing, less able to absorb. And also because it's lighter than lead. So if it's less able to absorb, right, then this one will decrease slower. That's able to absorb. Ma. So this is aluminium and this is lead. So if this one decreases less, again, you must know your exponents. La. This exponent, the mu will be smaller. Okay. So because of this, mu is smaller. The best thing I can do for you is if I have a graph, Let's say e to the power of negative kx. I will let x is equal to 1. Okay. So let's say this is k1. So if let's say k1 is, I don't know, 2, you can type e to the power of negative 2. If k1 is smaller, let's say 0 0.5, you can type e to the power of 0 0.5. And you can compare the number you will see that e to the power of negative 0 0.5 is greater than e to the power of negative 2. So if that number is bigger, this mu is smaller. So the drop is less severe, less absorbing. Okay, so this one you need to take some time to brain a bit because it's a very maths question. All right. Ali, let me know. What do you want to, what do you need in paper 5? There will be more paper 5 uh, when the May-June series come along. Lah. Okay. But currently, I think uh, we are focusing on completing the topic. All right. So I think the next, any questions, requests from the chat? Let me know. Okay. If not, I'll just finish up the question requested in the email. So the next will be May, June 17, paper 4, 2, question 10. Yeah. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't be shy. I'll stay on for another half an hour or so. But right now I'm checking my phone to make sure that I'm answering the right question. <sighs> anyway, how... How bad is the lockdown in your country? Or how's your college doing? Especially if you don't come from Malaysia. How is it like? How is learning online like for you? Do you enjoy the extra time you can spend at home? And you can take a break or take a nap in between classes? Do you miss your friends? Okay. 
Okay. Hang on. I got the year wrong. So, being June. But if I recorded already, I'm not going to discuss. Because covering same drama, you watch the recording better. What? At least it's more curated. But yes, if you're watching, holler at me, let me know what's been going on with you at where you are studying. When do when will I explain particle physics? After we do quantum. So we are currently recording operational amplifier. I'm guessing by mid-March, if you can hold on to mid slash late March. If you can. Mid slash late March. More or less lah. Question 6 and 7. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Alright, I'm going to uh, do this question first and then I will jump on to your question, okay, Darren? So this will be May, June 18. Paper 4 2 question. This is a capacitor question. Question 6. Okay, um, I'm gonna crop the questions. Give me a sec. Darren, where are you from? Are you from Malaysia? Are you from somewhere else? If you're from Malaysia, which college are you studying in? I want to know my audience, like, who am I talking to? So I know who to sell merch to. Joking lah. <laughs> okay, it's a bit slow. Just, just let it chill a bit. You're okay, one note. Jiayo, one note, you can do this. You're Zheng Wei from S3 ah. Walao. Okay. It's like my own student have to come to my own YouTube AMA. Very nice. The class not exciting enough, right? <laughs> so the whole purpose of doing this is for the February March people in India, Pakistan. I don't know who is doing the February March. Okay? Because definitely cannot record in time. So if you don't ask questions today, then it's okay lah. You can do it one. Or focus on the topics that you can do. Alright, this one, capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. Again, if they give you three mark, you better write in extremedetail.com. Extreme detail. Becca, are you from Malaysia as well? Where are you from? So the first detail that you can write, okay, again, to save me and you time so that we can cover more questions. I'm going to just put in the mark scheme and I'll break it down for you. So the first thing that you will think of writing is Q is equal to CV. Okay, so capacitance here is the ratio of charge. So normally I combine this in one sentence one. Ratio of charge stored in a single plate. So I'm repeating this whenever there's a chance because these are memory things. The more we repeat, the more we remember. So ratio of charge stored in a single plate to potential difference across the plates. That's all. So ratio of charge stored is one mark. Charge on one plate is one mark. Potential difference across or between the plate is the third mark. Okay, here we are going to draw capacitor connection. So you got three parallel plate. Whoops. You got three parallel plate. And this one is like this. So how can you get nine? Uh, you, look, you only got a few connection. Uh. So normally when solving this kind of question and you cannot immediately think of a solution, just draw all the possible connection uh, and connect them. So you can draw three series. You can draw two parallel, one series. You can have two series, one parallel, something like this. Of course, you can also have all three parallel. OK, 
okay, uh, these are all my options. So I, if I'm doing the exam, I will just sketch all of this out and start counting one by one. No? This one is obviously not because this is 666 six, six. microfarad, <laughs> microfarad, microfarad. So the total capacitance is 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 inverted. This is 2. No 2. Set life. Move on. This is 6 and 6. So this total capacitance will be 1 over 6 plus 6 plus 1 over 6. Inverted. Okay? Because these two is parallel, you combine them, it's 6 plus 6. So this is 1 over 12 plus 1 over 6. That will be 3 over 12. 12 over 3. This is 4 microfarad. We have a winner. Win. I'm just... Anyway, what did I just do? Hello? Don't hang. Stay chill. You got this one note. Also, I, I can use this to test whether my computer withstand Microsoft Teams better. Hmm... <laughs> I think the cap... Ooh, cannot place. Ah, yeah, can now lah. You get the idea lah. Alright, so this one is your 4 microfarad, this whole thing. Okay, we shall continue the calculation for this one. If OneNote allows me to write. Okay, there we go. Thank you, OneNote. So this 2 is in series. So 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 inverted. Then only add 6. So 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 is 2 over 6. 2 over 6 inverted is 6 over 2. 6 over 2 is 3. 3 plus 6 is 9. Yay! We have my favorite word. 9 in German. Okay, lo, done. This one is obviously not lah. No need to calculate. Next. Two capacitors of capacitance 3 and 2 are connected in series with a battery of EMF 8. Calculate the combined capacitance. These two are in series. Easy peasy. 1 over 3 plus 1 over 2 inverted. Okay, while we wait for one node to sort itself out, I'm going to press my calculator first. Hmm. So this one is 1.2. Yes. 1 over 3 plus 1 over 2 inverted. Okay, next. Using your answer in part 1, determine... For the capacitance, uh, for the capacitor of capacitance three microfarad, the charge on one plate, and the energy stored in the capacitor four marks. Wow. Q is CV. One one plate of the capacitor. This is in series. So it doesn't matter whether it's one plate or the whole thing. For series, when they are put side by side, everyone will have the same charge because it's by induction. Okay. So because they're in series, I can put 1.2. Then this one is 8 because the EMF is 8 volt. So 1.2 times 8. Capacitor is an easy kick. 9.6 micro coulomb. Okay. So what we are trying to say here <laughs> is that the amount of charge that comes out here is 9.6 micro coulomb. Meaning... Okay, don't hang up. This plate gets negative 9.6 micro coulomb and this plate get positive 9.6 micro coulomb by induction my neighbor opposite become negative i cannot stay neutral all my electrons will run away electrons will run away to this plate so this plate will become negative 9.6 micro coulomb Making this plate, same reason, no? all my neighbor, my opposite neighbor become negative higher. Then all the electrons must run away. This one will be positive 9.6 microcoulomb. So this will happen to all the neighboring capacitor. On and on and on and on. That's why in series, we can just calculate the total charge. That will be the charge on any plate of the capacitor. Cool. Next. Energy stored in the capacitor, I guess. 
Well, I don't have the potential. Which capacitor you want? Oh, 3 microfarad. Okay, this is C. I have a few I have a few options. I can use half CV square. I can use half QV. I can use half Q square over C. Am I right? Uh, I substitute Q is CV one. My brain a bit hang now. Q square. Oh yes, correct. You know which one I'll choose? I will choose the one without V because I don't know V. I know the total is 8 across both. But across 3, I mean I can use ratio lah but I don't need to ma. Okay. I have the capacitance. I have the charge. So I use Q square over C lo. You can use... Okay la, I use two methods lah. Okay, so this is the obvious one because we have Q and C. So the charge stored is 9.6 times 10 to the power of negative 6 square. The capacitance is 3. 3 times 10 to the power of negative 6. So I'm going to press my calculator. Darren, is it because our class very early? That's why no one asked me question. <laughs> why yeah? Why you think the question getting lesser and lesser as time passes in our class? Darren, you don't know Darren is my student. What are your opinions? 1.5436. I write the whole thing. 1.36 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Let me know if you're still watching. You can write 1.5, it's not a problem. Or uh, you can use Q equal to CV to go and find your V. Lo. This is 9.6 microcoulomb. C is 3 microfarad. You can find V because the micro and micro can cancel off. So the V will be 9.6 divided by 3. 3.2 volt. So then you can use your favorite equation. No? If your favorite equation is curricular Vta square, Cv square, you can then use 3 micro, negative 6 times 3.2 square. You will get the same answer. Inshallah. God willing. Yes, I hope I get the same answer. <laughs> yes, 1.536 times 10 to the power of negative 5. So this one is an extra step. Lah. I just want to avoid looking for another number that I don't need. So I'm going to round it to 3SF as per sign convention, but you can also write your answer as 1.54. Okay. Next one. I guess maybe the last one. So people watching. I only answer questions that you ask, okay? If you know us, you won't get questions that low. Okay, there's a request for an op M question. I will answer that as the last one. But let me jump on to winter 13 first. O N. You okay? I'm just gonna close this and open the kit. Okay, I think this question and the operational amplifier question will be the last one that I talk about. Because I think sign that computer is dying. Right, O N thirteen paper four one. Question 9b. This smells like an electromagnetic induction question. Is it? Oh no, this one. Mm. Okay, this is a sensing unit question. Which is nice because then I can wrap up with an OM question. Which is requested also by the interwebs. Alright, so here... The student designs a sensing unit for temperature change. 
Okay, so a 4 volt supply, a fixed resistor of resistance 2.5 kilo ohm, and a thermistor are available. Okay, sure. Thermistor has a resistance of 3 kilo ohm at 6 degrees Celsius and 1.8 kilo ohm at 20 degrees Celsius. That's a lot of information. Complete the circuit in 9.2 to show how the resistor and the thermistor are connected to provide an output greater than 2 volt at 6 degrees Celsius and less than 2 volt at 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, wait, uh, need to brain. We don't need to draw the... Let's label everything we have. We have a supply. We have a fixed resistor. Let's call this R. This is the second thing that we have. Fixed resistor. 2.5 kilo ohm. We have a thermistor. Let's call this RT. This is component number 3. Okay, and this RT is a bit of a special kit here. The resistance of RT, because it's a thermistor, depends on the temperature. So you've got 6 degrees here, and you have 20 degrees here. So I'm just going to put theta degrees Celsius. This is kilo ohm. So at 6 degrees, it is 3 kilo ohm. Dot, 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 3. And here is 1.8. I mean, this is probably a curve if you know how it looks like, but I just need these two values in graph form so it's easy for me to pull it in. So now we are going to connect. This is obviously a potential divider because you have two resistors, R and RT. So maybe you're thinking, okay, lo, I draw R. This is 2.5 kilo ohm. Please make sure you label. And this is three marks, by the way. And then this is thermistor. Make sure you know how to draw the symbol for thermistor. It looks like a spoon, something like this. It doesn't matter where you want, whether you want to draw like that or you want, whether you want to draw like that. Like, it doesn't matter. Okay? So this is 2.5 kilo ohm. And uh, this one is RT. Then this one will connect here. Okay? So you want V out to be greater than 2 volt at 6 degrees Celsius and less than 2 volt at 20. Okay, let's look at 6 first. At 6 degrees Celsius, RT is 3 kilo ohm. So RT is greater than 2.5 kilo ohm. Because this RT is greater, that means the resistance across T will be more than half. Because right now, these two resistors is sharing the potential. Okay, if this is 2.5 kilo ohm, and this thermistor here also happened to be 2.5, example, uh -huh. and this one is ground, here would be 4 volt, here would be 2 volt, and here would be 0 volt. Because it will be equally shared. This is 2 volt. This is 2 volt. Okay? So that's why it's important to know whether RT is bigger or smaller than 2.5. At 6 degrees, RT is already greater than 2.5. And you want the output to be greater than 2 volt. So this means that my V out is here. Dot, 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 dot. V out. To ground. Okay, that's all. You want to draw a voltmeter also can, you want to draw a voltmeter also can. You can also test at 20 degrees Celsius. RT is 1.8 kilo ohm. In this case, RT is less than 2.5 kilo ohm. So the potential difference VT, okay, let me write the conclusion here. Greater VT is more than half of 4 because they are sharing. RT is sharing it with 2.5 kilo ohm. So if I have a larger resistance, I take a larger share. More than 4 divided by 2, which is 2. In this case, Vt will be less than 2. So you know you change anything? This is your V out. Okay? It's nice and easy. Okay, the last one. May, June 18. Where's my phone? If I get a dollar every time I lose my phone, or think I lose my phone, I'll be quite rich by now. So, Summer 18, Paper 4-2. Okay, anyway, 
If you're wondering why I do this, it's just so that I can improve better as an online teacher and also just to diversify the things that I do and also to generally I think pandemic is a difficult time for everyone me included so being able to remind, remind myself that you know it's bigger than me and we are all doing in our own ways trying to help ourselves and help each other encourages me as well so I hope you also do the same law help people help yourself do better so that the world don't gg <laughs> If the word GG, then I also GG. Okay, you are welcome, Darren. Why don't people fall to question seven? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this will be the last question of the day. And then I'm calling it because I can feel my laptop heating up. So after this, I will let my laptop chill and I will rearrange my room to record a paper tree you're welcome guys thank you for tuning in just be nice help each other so that i don't feel like the world is ending <laughs> the world is ending who cares about a bunch of resistors right but maybe there's some future there if we hang on and help each other so miss ellie and i really appreciate the Thank you and the kind messages you give us, whether you are our student and you tell us or indirectly you help your friend or you help make the class a bit easier, whether it's the, during the actual class that you have with us every week or with your friends, every single thing counts to the collective. Now I sound like the Matrix. Okay, so if you come from the place that I teach, then you haven't talked about negative feedback yet. But if you're sitting for fat much, this is for you. Okay, so negative feedback uh, is when you take the output and you feed it back into the input. So for example, uh, I see some comments on, on YouTube and I see that, hey, quite a few of you are concerned that we cannot cover the FM syllab the syllabus in, term in time for May, June. May, June can, February, March cannot. So this is just like a, a way to address the feedback. It's not perfect. It's something lah, right? So we take some of the feedback and put it back into the input that is negative feedback. So in your op M, it will look like this. Here is your V out. You take your V out and you feed it back to your V minus. And normally there's a resistor here lah. Okay. So this negative feedback is when you use a fraction of the output voltage of an op amp is combined negative means deducted combined and deducted from input means can be positive feedback can not in syllabus Okay, so the effect of negative feedback when the videos are published, you will see that uh, there are some greater benefit because number one, it prevents saturation. So there's a smaller gain. If you look at your comparator, all you get is the square wave. You know, the videos I recently published, the traffic light videos. This may not be good. Lah. Maybe you don't want on and off. Lah. Maybe what you want. Okay, I'm going to do a trippy thing. You will see multiple me's right now streaming on OBS. So you can see this is my mic that I'm wearing here. And it is consistently being amplified into your system. Okay. But if let's say I make a loud sound close to my mic, observe this bar. It will hit full rate. Okay. When it hits full rate, it saturates. But you kind of don't want this one to saturate when I breathe or when I talk. This is all not saturated because the, there is gain, but the gain is not very big. So when you have that negative feedback, you can modulate so that this gain makes sense. Can you imagine every time I talk, this one just go to full rate? It won't work. Okay, so there's a smaller gain. And because of this smaller gain, signal is more stable. Or, okay, so you could say that the uh, output signal has greater bandwidth. So I can speak very soft, I can speak very loud. Hopefully, if OBS is doing its job, you should still be able to hear me. So greater bandwidth. 
and more stable. All right. So here you will have a feedback, a negative feedback circuit. Okay. And you're asked to calculate the gain of the amplifier. To do this, there are two ways. One way is to memorize the equation by identifying the circuit. So I will show you, that's why this is one mark. They expect you to memorize the equation. Method one, identify circuit. Is it inverting or is it non-inverting? Here's a clue. If it's inverting, your V plus is grounded. If it's non-inverting, V plus is equal to V in and not grounded. So go ahead and smell out where is V plus. V plus is here. It is not grounded. So because it's not grounded, this one is the non-inverting amplifier. So for non-inverting amplifier, videos are coming soon, don't worry. The gain can be calculated using 1 plus RF over R in. Means how to identify the ratio. Where is RF? Where is R in? Ask yourself, where is the feedback? The feedback must be connected to V out. So V out is here. Then this is V out. So the feedback is connected from V out through this resistor and come here. This is the feedback loop. See, it's fed back into the V minus or the inverting input. So I'm going to write here that this is RF. So your RF 6400. And then the other one, you can put R in, you can put R1, uh, whatever you want to call it. Lah. can be R1. So this one will be R1. I'm going to highlight this part here. This is the remaining one that goes to ground. One entire branch. So this one is R1. Okay. So just use 1 plus 6400 over 800. That's all. Press calculator. I think this is 8. So this is 9. The gain is 9. 9.0 because 2SF. Don't lose that mark. Okay, and finally, uh, we are going to determine the output of the input potential. V out over V in is equal to gain. So this is what people normally do. Lah. We know the V in is this one. Okay, so you want to determine V out when the V in is equal to 0 0.6. So V out will be equal to the gain, which is 9 times 0 0.60. This is 0 point, what am I talking about? 5.4. Okay, I think my maths is okay. 5.4 volt. Okay, you're very happy. Life is good. Carry on. Negative 2.1. You're like, I got this. V out over negative, I mean 2.1, V in, is equal to the gain, which is 9. So from here, V out is equal to negative 18.2. So very happy, oh, you write negative 18.2, and then you call it a day, but then this is wrong. Always double check, what's your supply? Because although... The mic I show you right now is not saturated. So you can see this one is not yet saturated. There will be a certain loudness where I slap my calculator just now where this one will hit maximum. So saturation is possible. In this case, our saturated current or saturation output is this one. The largest you can go is 9. 9 is the largest possible v out so if this is the largest possible v out then can it be i mean not just nine lah my bad positive negative nine so can it be negative 18 no 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 so bracket this one is saturated exclamation point so hence 
V out is only a very sad negative 9.0 volt. Mm -hmm. Cut. A lot of times people forget because they got happy. Look, when they say the gain is 9, uh, it means that all the output is 9 times the input. So you input 0 0.6, your output is 5.4. 5.4 is less than 9, so it's okay. Okay? But when you input 2.1 and you multiply by 9, you get 18. Op M is like, sorry, bro, I can only do 9. I give you 9, you want or not? <laughs> it's a bit like your brain, right? Hello, brain, we will do... 20 past year question today and then your brain is like sorry bro i can only do nine <laughs> you can only do nine saturated now. okay anyway the gain of the amplifier is constant so it's always nine state one change that can be made to figure 7.1 so that the amplifier circuit monitors the temperature sus we need to put a rt a thermistor somewhere don't know where draw here first with gain decreasing as temperature rises. Okay, so if we remember, the equation is 1 plus Rf over R1. So what do we want? Objective. We want gain increase when temperature, theta, temperature increase. What's the effect of temperature and RT? Thermistor. So step one. Let's determine the relationship between theta and RT. The hotter it is, the smaller the RT. Because if you remember just now, the first question we asked, this thermistor is a special cookie. It has a relationship like this because it's a negative temperature coefficient. These are semiconductors. So if you remember from your chapter 25 quantum, the conduct the majority charge carrier in your semiconductor, very low energy, lazy to move. So you need to burn it a bit. <laughs> like you need to roast, like I need to roast my student a bit, then only they will begin to move. Okay, so you need to roast. So you increase the temperature to decrease the resistance to knowledge. Okay, anyway, temperature increase, resistance decrease. So if resistance decrease and you want this gain to be bigger, do you replace RF with RT or you replace R1 with RT? Of course, you're going to replace R1 with RT, right? Okay, I only got six viewers, so I'm not going to assume that someone's going to answer me. All right, so this R1 here is going to be, you're going to need this one to be smaller. So second point, for gain to increase, replace... R1 with RT. So that's my answer. They say state only. Ma. So I just state. La. R1 is 800. I scroll back and show you. Nah. R1 is 800. So replace the 800 ohm resistor with a thermistor. That's all. 100 ohm with a thermistor. What do you think? When you think about you want to increase the gain. Okay, let's do it slowly. We want the gain. Eh, no, we want the gain to decrease. Higher. That means this is a sign that I should go and take a nap. <laughs> when the gain decreases, then we will replace. Just flip RF with RT. Hmm, no wonder I feel a bit weird. Gain decrease. So replace the 6400 ohm with thermistor. What I normally tell students is, if you make a mistake like what I did, swap a different color and use a different color pen. Because then you will like, okay, here is where I easily get confused because I get lost in all the variables. I better make sure I write everything properly. Okay? So let's start. Let's repeat again. You want the gain to decrease. I made a mistake. Lah. I just didn't read the question. <laughs> so I did for gain increasing. Okay. So if theta increases, temperature decreases, the thermistor temperature should drop. Okay. So the thermistor is when temperature increases, the thermistor resistance should drop. When the resistance drop, but I want the gain increase, I should put my resistor at R1. Because when this number is smaller, this is the denominator ma then this entire thing will become bigger. You can try out certain numbers and see law to satisfy yourself. Okay? 
So when this R1 is smaller, this G will be bigger. Inverse relationship. All right. But if you want the gain to decrease, then you will replace RF, the one on top, with a thermistor. Because when this RF, RF, which is now replaced with RT, decreases, it has a directly proportional, directly proportional relationship with G. Not directly because there's a 1 here, la, so proportional relationship with G. So when this RF becomes bigger, this G becomes smaller. Alright, so that's all for our very first oh, Q&A session. Alright, so if you are sitting for your FedMash paper next week, paper 4, I suggest that you focus on the topics that you really know and start grinding XP for past year, meaning do more, do more past years. Alright, if you got any questions, uh, if you comment or you get in touch with us, we will try, I will try my best to answer. Lah. Maybe it will be just be a screenshot like this where I write my explanation. Alright, use the resources wisely that you have, share them with your friends, don't study alone, support each other. And thanks for tuning in. I will see you in the next one and hopefully my computer will look better. Isn't this like how... Like at the end of a class, you only remember this question and all the question discussed before this is gone. Because I'm... Oh, even the latest question is also gone. See, so what do you need to do? You need to close one note and open again. Alright. Anyway, I hope you learned something today. And I appreciate you being here. In this world, do take care of yourself, take care of each other. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thanks for showing up. And uh, if you want to watch the playback for this video, it should be available soon. Bye-bye. Good luck with your exams. See you.